Let me start with the bottom line, since it's quite simple to explain here. Uh, I will start, uh, start with the result. So what I'm going to show you today is uh, the following result, that uh, finding uh, possibly mixed Nash equilibrium in potential games requires large communication. And uh, this result is true for uh, games with few actions and many players, and also in case of, with few players and many actions, and therefore it's true if we combine those two as well. Uh, and the same is true for congestion games with many facilities. Okay, this is what I want to show you today. So the plan of the talk, uh, I will uh, briefly explain what potential games are, then what uh, congestion games are. I will uh, talk about communication complexity specifically in the context of game theory. To, uh, pro will provide some motivation for it. Uh, then I will discuss what uh, related literature, and uh, if time will allow, uh, we'll see some proof ideas. Okay, so let's start with what is a potential game. Okay, so uh, a game is a potential game if there exists some potential function that captures the gains and losses of players uh, by unilateral deviations, uh, uh, or formally, if the change in the utility of a player when de by, by deviating from AI to AI prime is the same as the change in the potential. Note that this is the same potential for all players. Okay? Uh, just an example of a potential game. So one, uh, one example is the prisoner dilemma. Okay? How can I see, this is the prisoner dilemma where this uh, action, the first action corresponds to a cooperation, the second uh, to def uh, defection, and uh, what uh, I claim that this, uh, this function is a potential of the game. How can I see it? The difference between uh, three and four is one, namely player will g gain one by deviating from here to here. The, here, I should look at the utilities of player two because he's the one to deviate. So the, uh, the change here between zero and one is one. And you can see that it works out. And uh, essentially, so the potential of the prisoner dilemma is this function. Okay? And uh, there is a one to one correspondence between pure Nash equilibria in the potential game and local maxima of the potential. Right, so this point two two, in fact, it's also a global maximum. But even if it was local maximum, and here I'm talking about locality in the context of unilateral deviations. <coughs> so if this uh, every local maximum corresponds to a Nash equilibrium and vice versa, okay. Uh, Okay, so now what, uh, what congestion games are? And I w instead of giving you uh, notations, let me explain it verbally. So we have a, a set of facilities, uh, F, and uh, think of those faci facilities as roads that connect uh, vertices in the graph. Uh, each player has to choose a subset of facilities, right? So to get from his uh, source to his destination, he should take several roads. Yeah, so, uh, so actions of a player is essentially a route from source to destination. Okay? Uh, uh, if, when every player chooses some subset, it defines a congestion on every road. Each, for each uh, road, how many players decided to, uh, to use it? Yeah? So uh, the congestion on each road is the number of users of this road. Uh, and uh, each facility has a cost function uh, that in the context of uh, routing, it means that how, uh, how congested will be the road, or, uh, namely how much time will it take me to cross the road uh, if uh, this is the number of uh, players that will use it. And finally, uh, uh, the utilities of each player essentially is the sum of uh, uh, costs over all facilities that he has used, um, which is, in this ca case, captures the total uh, time from source to destination. Okay? So this, game, this class is called congestion games. 
And uh, a famous result by Mondoro and Shapley is that uh, potential games that I just described uh, in the previous slide before uh, is that potential games are equivalent to, co to congestion games. Namely, every congestion game admits a potential. In fact, this uh, goes back to Rosenthal, who, um, uh, who defined the notion of congestion games. And uh, uh, you can do also the opposite direction. You can, every potential game can be viewed as a congestion game with, uh, uh, with some facilities. And the, the number of facilities that needed to describe a game as a potential game is uh, of the same order as the number of action profiles. Okay? Uh, now, a short uh, introduction to communication complexity and specifically to communication complexity in game theory. Yeah, so one thing that I could te tell you and I think for is, okay, communication complexity is a nice complexity model and uh, let's, uh, le uh, game, uh, Nash equilibrium is also a very nice uh, model. Let's, le let's just understand what is the communication complexity. But I think that in this case, there is also something interesting to say beyond just uh, two, two interesting models and this is what I'm I want, to, I want to tell you. So uh, equilibrium uh, is uh, essentially a static notion that uh, essentially in, a, in an indirect way, it assumes that players know to, pre to predict correctly the behavior of their opponents. Yes, because I'm, uh, I'm best replying to the action profiles of the opponent. Namely, I know what my opponent are, uh, are going to do. Yeah. So, and uh, it is a good question to answer where, where this assumption comes from. Yeah, so why uh, uh, is it indeed the case that I know to predict correctly the behavior of the opponents? Uh, and uh, this raises the question, uh, so uh, Nash in his uh, seminal paper on Nash Equilibria uh, suggested an explanation for that that said, okay, so if the game is played repeatedly, that m then maybe in some scenarios I can uh, predict the behavior of the opponent simply by looking at their past, beha at their, uh, past behavior. So, uh, and uh, then I will assume that they will play ap approximately the same as they did in the last previous round. This was just an informal idea and uh, he didn't claim that it works, uh, uh, always works, but uh, this was kind of uh, one explanation for, uh, for this uh, un uh, indirect assumption that I know the utility of my opponents. And then the economists asked us the question, can players learn to play in equilibrium? Is it indeed the case? If we have a game and we play it again and again and again, can we learn to play in equilibrium? And uh, there was an extensive literature on this question. And I think that the bottom line essentially uh, presents quite a few uh, uh, learning dynamics that, uh, that all of them, uh, uh, those that I mentioned here, all of them essentially lead to equilibrium, even in uh, uh, general uh, classes of games or without any restriction on the game, etc. So existence of dynamics that lead to equilibrium, we know that such, such uh, dynamics exist. Okay? Uh, uh, slightly more recently, people have asked themselves also the question, how fast can players learn to play in equilibrium? Okay? Is it, if, uh, can we do it in reasonable time or, uh, or not? Okay? So, uh, before I'm getting uh, deeper into this question, we should maybe explain what do we mean by, uh, by uh, uh, learning an equilibrium, which type of dynamics we allow and which type we disallow. So here is a dynamic at the very, uh, yeah. Are these questions to consider only potential or general? No, 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 no. This, uh, all this, uh, uh, this is a general. Uh, introduction to communication complexity in games, not necessarily in potential games. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, there, there was also an extensive uh, uh, work on specifically potential games, but this is... Uh, uh, so here is a dynamic that uh, leads to equilibrium. Every player sits at his home, compute the set of all equilibria, they pick the lexicographically the first uh, equilibrium and from the very first day they start to play a, a, an equilibrium and play it always. Okay, so this is probably not what we mean when we say 
to learn to play in equilibrium, okay? So the actual question that we want to ask is how fast can players learn to play in equilibrium using some reasonable learning rules, okay? So what classifies a learning rule as reasonable? So one suggestion uh, that has been suggested by Hart and Maskolel, uh, and it includes, in fact, uh, most of the learning rules that uh, has been suggested before or after this paper uh, is the following, that uh, a learning rule is uncoupled if my behavior does not depend on the utilities of the opponents. Or saying it differently, as if I don't know the utilities of the opponents, uh, I know only my own utility. And note that it might, and in fact it should, depend on the, act, on, on the re, uh, realized actions of my opponents, right? Otherwise, I learn not, nothing, right? It, uh, it should depend on the actions of the opponent, but not on their utility, okay? So this is the notion of uncoupledness. It's quite acceptable class of uh, learning rules. Uh, so now let's rephrase the question. How fast can players learn to play in equilibrium using uncoupled dynamics, okay? Uh, and the answer to, to this question turns out to be communication complexity. It was, it's an, an observation that, uh, by Konitzer and Seldol that essentially com uh, communication complexity captures up to some logarithmic factor, exactly captures the rate of convergence of dynamics to equilibrium. Why is that? So uh, when we think of dynamics, uh, right, the, uh, every dynamic defines a communication protocol. Instead of playing an action, uh, I communicate to the, uh, to the other players which, which action I'm going to play. In the other direction, if I want to simulate a communication protocol, yeah, then instead of uh, sending the other players a bit of zero or one, I will play either my first or my second action. Okay, so it's one to one direction, and the, this is why I think communication complexity is a very interesting uh, um, topic to study in the context of uh, game theory because it captures precisely the rate of convergence of a very natural class of dynamics. Yes? Getting the setup. So I agree one direction. Uh, there is a dynamic, uncoupled dynamic, there should be a communication protocol. But a communication protocol might be weird. Exactly. Because this protocol is uncoupledness. I agree with you that the dynamic that, uh, that follows from a, from a protocol is uh, maybe is not the most natural as best reply dynamic, fictitious play. Yes, it's not, it will not be as elegant as, uh, as those. It will be kind of weird dynamic that uh, based on the history will, will tell to player either to play his first or second uh, action, and after they will learn the, the equilibrium, they will start to play it, okay? Uh, it's not, the, uh, the dynamic that follows from a protocol is not, an, uh, not necessarily is a natural one, but it is an, an uncoupled dynamic. Because the distribution of information in, uh, in the uncoupled uh, in, uh, assumption is precisely the one that, that we have in communication complexity. Actually, the communication complexity is, I mean, you could just commun communicate the matrix, right? The pair of matrix? Yes. So, uh, an upper bound uh, on, uh, on the communication or complexity of every notion that relates to, uh, to games is, is the input size. It, this is true generally in the, yeah, the, so the, yeah, so the interesting questions will be whether it is polynomial in the input or logarithmic in the input. Okay, so, so far I gave, I, I explained you what is the potential games, what is a congestion game, and gave some general motivation about communication complexity, not necessarily in the context of potential games. Okay, so now let's see what, uh, what's, what is known specifically in the context of potential games. Okay, so, and let's start with approximate equilibrium. Okay, so for approximate equilibrium, uh, we have a very simple, very natural dynamic that uh, leads us to, uh, to an approximate equilibrium. Uh, you have a question? Yeah. yeah the same question for Why not expand the explanation? Like, why can a communication protocol basically uh, 
sending some information like hey, name not my entire valuation but some information about my valuation. Like, I can do that in a communication protocol, right? Yes. Or, but doesn't that violate the uncoupled condition? Like, you're not allowed to exchange any information regarding my valuation. No, no, no. So let, let, let me repeat what is the uncoupled uh, assumption. The uncoupled assumption is that my behavior during the game, uh, essentially, let, let's say it's simpler. Each player knows his own utility function only, but does not know the utility functions of the opponent. This is precisely the, uh, the communication complexity model that we typically sta sta study in game theory, that the, ever, uh, the private input of, of every player is his own utility function. And uh, obviously, yeah, uh, I reveal a lot of information about my utility during the, so, okay. Okay, so uh, in, in potential games, in, in fact, we have very, quite natural and very simple uh, uh, dynamic that will lead us to approximate equilibrium. And the observation is that when a player deviates to an action that improves him, his own utility, it also improves the potential by exactly the same amount, right? This is exactly the potential property. So if we uh, look at the sequence of unilateral deviations that improve by at least epsilon the, uh, the potential, then uh, every time we, we, we make a jump of an epsilon, so the number of steps that it will take us to reach an approximate equilibrium is at most the bound on, on the potential uh, divided uh, by epsilon, okay? And uh, so in each step, I pick one player who, who can uh, gain more than epsilon by deviation, if such exists, and uh, if no, then uh, I, term, uh, I stop at this uh, point, and uh, this is a, a, a dynamic that works quite, uh, quite fast. In fact, once we talk about approximate equilibria, we as typically have to assume some bound on the utilities, so we typically normalize it in zero one, and in games where the utilities are in the uh, zero one, the potential is bounded by n. Okay, so this is a very fast procedure, very fast procedure or a polynomial procedure in the number of players and the, in uh, in, in the approximation that leads us to, uh, to, to approximate Nash equilibrium. Okay? So the approximate Nash equilibrium is uh, solved in, uh, in some sense. Uh, you can, we can think that it is solvable uh, quite easily. And this is true both in the communication model and in the computational model. It's, uh, it's uh, the number of, uh, this protocol can be also uh, executed very, uh, using very small communication. Okay, uh, so now what is known about exact equilibrium? So let me start with the summary about what, uh, what we know in the case of, uh, uh, of uh, computational complexity. So in the computational complexity, we know that computing a pure Nash equilibrium is PLS complete. Okay, this is a PLS complete problem. Uh, what we now know about mixed Nash equilibrium? Nothing. We, uh, sorry, <laughs> we, know, we, know, we know kind of a positive result. We know that computing a, a mixed Nash equilibrium belongs to the class CLS, which is continuous local search, but an, uh, right, uh, an, an, an open problem is to provide any hardness evidence for mixed Nash equilibrium in potential games, or alternatively prove that uh, it is uh, to provide a polynomial algorithm. Okay? The, so this is an uh, open problem that we do not know today uh, how to solve. What about communication complexity? The, uh, the one, the, the topic that we are talking about today. So uh, pure Nash equilibrium in potential game uh, as uh, requires large communication, and in fact, it's quite a recent result. Uh, uh, and our result today, what I want to present to you is that mixed Nash equilibrium in potential games requires high communication, okay? Let me say a few words about kind of in my, in my intuition for uh, at least uh, some intuition on, on how, why, uh, mixed Nash uh, proving hardness on uh, mixed Nash equilibrium is hard, okay? <laughs> so, 
and uh, over here you can so we can recall the <laughs> the picture of Ruta. So we have here NP. Here we have TFNP. Those those are uh, total problems that has uh, solutions. And 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 in this class we we have two kind of uh, very central. Uh, uh, mm. Uh, classes of problems. One is PPAD, which roughly speaking captures uh, prob uh, total problems where existence can be proved by Brouwer fixed point theorem. Yes? You said it was known for no that was not shown right? Yes. So I assume therefore, just to see that I'm understanding it correctly, so the hardness there was not on instances where the pure was the only Definitely not. For sure not. Uh, uh, it, it, it had a lot of bad mixed Nash equilibria. Yeah. 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 It's quite common uh, phenomena that uh, mix that potential games will have uh, mixed Nash equilibria. So, for instance. Uh, Problem that I, it's worst case hardness. Yes. So I can yeah. Yeah. This is what the proof does. In principle, I could uh, also design a game that would have many equilibria, but all the pure and mixed Nash equilibria essentially will solve some communicationally hard problem. In the, uh, you, I, the, the uh, indeed, what we do is we, we construct a game with a unique uh, Nash equilibrium, which is pure. Uh, and uh, yeah. so j just uh, this is a potential game. Uh, and uh, it has two pure Nash equilibria, but it has also the mixed Nash equilibrium that uh, where uh, I played uh, this uh, action with probability two thirds and this action with probability one third. And the second uh, guy does the same. Okay, so it's not a real phenomenon that, mix, uh, that potential games will have uh, uh, mixed Nash equilibria. And in some sense, you can say that it is kind of, kind of the, the typical uh, case. Uh, okay, so uh, we have uh, here uh, the, the class PPAD, which roughly speaking captures uh, uh, problems that can, uh, whose existence can be proved by Brouwer fixed point theorem. And we have another class, uh, P, uh, PLS, which is polynomial uh, local search, uh, which roughly speaking uh, captures uh, total problems where there exists uh, some uh, existence proof that is based on a uh, discrete local, ma uh, local ma existence of lo uh, local maximum in discrete graphs. And uh, in the intersection of them, we have another class of continuous local search um, that uh, in fact has, uh, so uh, that relies on existence of local maximum in, a, in kind of smooth, uh, in a continuum, uh, in the continuous space. And, uh, and the po uh, potential mixed Nash equilibria, in fact, belong, belongs to this class. This is something that uh, the Skalakis and Papa Dimitri have shown in uh, 2011. And, uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, so, so the, the intuition is that uh, I, can, I can give you, uh, at least I, uh, the intuition for why it belongs to the, inter the intersection is very simple, yes, that, uh, I can ignore the fact that this is, it, it is a potential game and just use Brouwer fixed point theorem to, to prove existence of mixed Nash equilibrium. This will be, uh, oh, this tells us why this uh, problem belongs to PPAD and why it belongs to PLS is because uh, I can ignore the fact that I, I want, uh, I allow a mixed Nash equilibrium and so just for a pure one and use the, the potential property. Okay, to find the pure Nash equilibrium. So uh, when we have more uh, a, a, a kind of existence proof uh, uh, for, for the notion, then hiding it or proving that it is hard to, to, uh, to find it becomes more tricky because uh, yeah, this is roughly speaking the idea. And uh, as I said, it is a, a big open problem whether this problem is complete in CLS.
case in the computational world, and we show that in the communication analog it is. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, so, so, so I, I, I don't show that it, it belongs. It is. Uh, we don't show that in the communication analog it is CLS because uh, I, I, we just show that it is hard. Okay, that uh, the problem is hard in the communication uh, world. Okay, so let me clarify what, uh, what is the notion of communication complexity that we look at. So when we talk about potential games, so the private information of player I is his own utility function. Uh, and uh, the promise is that the utilities uh, form a potential game. And uh, the output is a mixed Nash equilibrium. Uh, and the, the theorem states that the communication complexity of uh, this problem with two players and n actions is high, polynomial in the input, and that the problem in, uh, uh, in games with n players and two actions is also high. We, we do not uh, have exactly a polynomial bound, but yet it is exponential in uh, square root of n rather than n. Okay? Uh, Okay, so uh, these are the results uh, for, communication, for uh, communication complexity. Let me note also that the way I presented it, uh, I presented it as a promise communication problem. Uh, and uh, I like more total problems. <laughs> uh, but, so there is a very close uh, analog of this communication problem that in addition is, is, uh, is total. And the analog, I will tell you what it is. You are given any game and uh, either provide me a succinct evidence for the fact that the game is not a potential game or uh, find me a pure Nash equilibrium. And uh, the fact that the game has a succinct uh, evidence and that this succinct evidence can be computed using low communication, this is something that we have proved in, uh, in, in, the, in another paper with uh, Noam and uh, with Noam Nissan and the Shachar Dobzinski. Okay, so uh, d determining whether a game is a potential uh, game is, uh, is something uh, that uh, you, and uh, providing an evidence that it is not, is, is communicationally easy problem. Okay, and yet compu computing even mixed Nash equilibrium is hard. What about congestion games? Okay, so uh, here I think it is more natural uh, to consider slightly different uh, notion uh, of uh, sli to distribute the information slightly differently than uncoupledness, right? So I think the most natural thing, I will not say the most, but the, the, the version that we considered is the following. So uh, the action sets, which routes each player can take, are common knowledge to all the players, okay? And uh, what should I know in order to play the game? I should know my own, uh, the cost of the, uh, the, faci the, the, cost of the facilities, uh, in which facilities. So those facilities that I potentially can choose in, in any of my actions, I should know them. Yeah, I should know what are the consequences of, uh, of these games. So this is the distribution uh, uh, of information that we assume. Uh, uh, we say that every player knows the, co the cost functions of all facilities that he can potentially use. In fact, the only costs that he doesn't know are the costs of, uh, of facilities that n do not appear in any of his subsets. Yeah, these are the only facilities that he doesn't know. And uh, the, output, the desired output is a pure mesh equilibrium, and the results are essentially the same. Uh, let me uh, point out one more. So, uh, the, uh, in the game that we have defined, uh, uh, as you can see, we have quite a lot of facilities. Yes, the ideal, uh, ideally, we would like the, num the number of facilities to be smaller. Yeah, and uh, to prove, uh, uh, to prove, uh, to, to replace here. The, uh, let's say, let's focus on the case where. Uh, the number of action is two, and we have n players. Ideally, we would like that the number of facilities, let's say, will be polynomial in the number of, uh, uh, of players rather than uh, exponential. Unfortunately, it is impossible 
to prove such a hardness result, why it is impossible? Because there exists a very simple communication protocol. Yes, uh, in case where the number of facilities is small, even in cases where the number of actions is huge, uh, then uh, each player can just communicate to all the others the costs of all facilities, and then they essentially know the whole game, and, uh, uh, and uh, they can compute an equilibrium. Okay, so, uh, so the, the, bot the bottleneck in, uh, in uh, congestion games is the number of facilities, essentially, not the number of actions, as in potential games. Okay? Now let me, uh, so maybe I will say first that uh, this uh, second result on, uh, on congestion games is essentially a, a, a co so it is not a straightforward corollary from the, uh, for, so I, I, ju I just mentioned in the, in the second slide, I think, that uh, congestion games are equivalent to potential games. Yeah? So if you use the reduction of Monderer and Chapley between these two games, uh, this reduction doesn't work for us because uh, it does not preserve uh, this distribution of information. So we need slightly different uh, reduction, and what we do is we, we uh, we utilize the, the specific structure of our hard instances to provide not a general reduction from potential games to congestion games as Mondoran and Chapley does, but only uh, we, uh, for, for our specific case, we succeed to, uh, to, to, to produce such a congestion games with uh, such a congestion game, okay? Uh, so the, the real interesting uh, kind of, the, the, the real, Deep theorem is the, the first one about potential, uh, potential games. Uh, and let me, before I'm getting to what, were the, what are the proof ideas of, uh, of our paper, let me tell you some, some kind of general structure of a proof that recently has been implemented in quite a few papers uh, for proving some informational ba uh, ba lower bound on mixed, Nash, on mixed equilibria, right? So the main difficulty with, uh, with, with mixed Nash equilibria that are essentially, in addition to the, the pure equilibria, there might erase some very crazy mixed Nash equilibrium and we want to avoid, a situ uh, avoid this situation. Okay, this is the main difficulty in proving hardness for, uh, for mixed Nash equilibria. And the structure, roughly speaking, was the following. We start with some end of a line problem. We, uh, there are, uh, uh, where essentially we know where the line starts and uh, then uh, it, uh, and I, uh, I want to, to, to know when the line ends and we can query it and uh, so proving uh, uh, hardness for this uh, problem is not, uh, is not very hard in the query model. If we are talking about communication model, then we can use uh, the uh, celebrated uh, uh, recent, uh, recent uh, simulation theorems, which will distribute the information in the line between Alice and Bob. Okay, so let me focus for simplicity on the case of query complexity. Let's say that we want to prove slightly uh, a weaker result on query complexity. Uh, in, in order to lift it to communication complexity, we just need the results of uh, the recent results on lifting theorems. So we start uh, with, uh, with, uh, with a, hard, a query hard uh, end of a line problem. And then what we do, we embed this line to a continuous Brouwer function, okay? So this is a line, uh, you can think of it as a line on the n-dimensional uh, discrete hypercube, and we define from it a function from the hy uh, hypercube to itself, and uh, the, this uh, we, uh, we embed it to a kind of smooth function that should have good properties as locality, but the, the issue is that the, the uh, I will get uh, in more details what, uh, what, what are the properties of, uh, of this function, but essentially the fixed points of it uh, should correspond to, end, to the end of, a li of the line. So that all the, the fixed points of this function uh, appears at the end of the line. Uh, then uh, we, we, are, we get closer to what we want. We define a mm, continuous action uh, game, 
where all equilibria are fixed points of this function f. Okay? Uh, this will appear in the, second in the next slide, so I will wait with it. And finally, to complete the reduction, we discretize the, the, the action space of this game and hope that everything will work well. Okay? And uh, that uh, the fact that we discretized didn't hurt much. Uh, that uh, the same arguments that we, we succeeded to do for continuous actions are applicable in the discretized uh, action set. So this is the, a, a general structure that uh, worked twi quite well in different uh, uh, variants of the problem. Uh, why this structure is not good for us? So let me focus specifically on item number three that I mentioned, is to define a continuous imitation game uh, with all equilibria are fixed points of F. And in fact, this is very elegant and very, uh, and qu uh, quite simple, uh, quite simple game. Think that you have a function F and uh, you want that all equilibria will be the fixed points of F. I define the following game. The, each player has to choose a point in the hypercube. Okay. The payments are essentially player one tries to imitate player two, namely to be as close as possible to the, uh, uh, square, uh, to the square of the of L2 uh, norm, and uh, player two want to, wants to imitate f of x, not x, but f of x. Okay, and uh, so even uh, so even if player one uh, player two plays some crazy mix strategy. My, I have a, I has a unique best reply, which is the uh, expectation of y. Okay, and this is the way we can kind of uh, avoid uh, crazy mixed equilibria because even if the ex uh, even if the other playing is playing some uh, something crazy, I will play pure. And the, the, this argument essentially tells us that the mixed uh, ne uh, uh, any mixed Nash equilibrium of this game is in fact pure Nash equilibrium. And to see that the pure Nash equilibrium must uh, satisfy x equals uh, f of x is immediate, right? Because if x is pure and y is pure, I want to play x and y equals f of x, okay? Uh, what's the problem with this uh, construction in our case? That this is not, it is not a potential game, okay? The imitation game is not a potential game. It's, uh, so we cannot use this idea. Uh, so this was step, uh, the step of the imitation game, and let me tell you what we do. Instead of uh, thinking of, 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 uh, of a Brouwer function, think that what we want to do is to find the local maximum of a potential. Why local maximum of the potential? We just said that in the computational world, the, the problem of mixed Nash equilibrium is essentially CL, is in CLS, so it is very natural to think of a problem that essentially tries to maximize, instead of finding a fixed point, which is a PPAD, tries to find the local maximum of, the pot of a potential, okay? So, and the game that I will define is the following. Player, uh, it, it looks similar, the players each choose a point, uh, but instead of uh, trying just to imitate y, I will add him a bonus of uh, phi of x uh, in addition to, to, to what he's doing. And uh, the second player, in addition to, to, uh, to, to the imitation, I, I will add him a bonus of y. Okay, so this is the idea. So first of all, this is a potential game. How can I see it? So identical interest games, games where our utilities are identical, are potential games. And also, terms that do not depend on the action of the opponent are also potential, uh, potential games. And sums of two potential games is a potential game. So essentially, this is a potential game whose uh, potential function is this one plus this one plus phi of y, okay? Uh, so the good news that this is a potential game, moreover, the, uh, the, in, equili in equilibrium, uh, so uh, if we set uh, phi to be sufficiently small with respect to x minus y, then we can approximately uh, 
do the same uh, uh, arguments to prove that everything is almost pure. We cannot apply exactly the same uh, argument to say that I'm playing exactly the expectation, but I definitely don't, don't want to be too far from the expectation. Okay, so it still has this uh, property of uh, contracting, uh, concentrating all possible actions in some small environment, which is something that I want to work with. Uh, so if, uh, if we fix phi to be not, uh, not very large or relatively small to this term, then I still will always want to play something that is close to expectation. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, uh, how can I see that, uh, that in equilibrium, say it's pure, or an intuition why in equilibrium uh, we will have a local maximum? Because uh, this term, by, by, by choosing something slightly bigger, uh, I, my gain will be epsilon times the gradient. And my loss will be of order uh, epsilon square, right? Because here, this is a quadratic term and this is a linear term. So for very close points, I, de I, I will prefer to gain in the, in the potential and lose in the, uh, lose in the imitation, say, uh, say this way. Uh, so this is the main, uh, so this is kind of the, the, the yeah. It can, can it happen that you play a really small probability for points that are uh, so, so, uh, so let's say that we are uh, talking about well-supported, uh, and then you can apply other standard tricks. But uh, if we talk about N Nash, yes, it's, 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 uh, it's indeed a problem, but so you need to go through... Uh, no, sorry, I'm taking it back. We are talking about here about exact, uh, exact equilibrium, right? We said that approximate everything uh, you can do, so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in fact, our techniques can be applied also to approximate equilibrium with when the approximation is exponential yes um, but uh, and then you, you uh, what you said is, is correct you can play bad actions and then you need to go through the notion of well support uh, okay so uh, so I reminded you that this was the structure before and now I changed uh, bullet number three right so I changed bullet number three and this uh, tells me also that I have to change the previous steps, right? What we want now to embed L to a continuous potential function with all local maxima are uh, uh, correspond to uh, to an equilibrium uh, to uh, uh, to the uh, are located at the end of the line. Okay, this is uh, and. Uh, to those of you, so this is the, typically the, the most, uh, at least here's for Padimitro of Avasis is quite complicated construction. It takes uh, uh, quite a few pages to prove its correctness and to define even the, the construction. It's not easy and people, since it, it, this uh, construction was so useful, so people have tried to simplify it and uh, and essentially uh, to the best of my knowledge there is not no, some simple uh, construction that does what Hirsch, Papa Dimitro, and Vavasis did. Uh, in our case, we wanted to, to embed it to a potential function, and uh, not surprisingly, also, uh, uh, our construction is non-trivial. Non I will not say it's, uh, it's trivial, uh, uh, but essentially, the, uh, t technically, I think this is the main contribution. This takes uh, the, this is the longest uh, uh, proposition in the in the, pro, uh, in, the in the paper. Uh, is is es essentially it says that uh, what Hirsch, Papa Dimitro, and Vavasis did for uh, embedding line into Brouwer function, uh, we have a sim uh, the same analog for uh, embedding a metered line. Uh, to those of you who know, meter uh, is, means that uh, when, when I query a vertex, I uh, know, not only know whether the line goes through it or not, but I also know the val uh, how many steps I went so far in the line. The, this, is approximate, uh, this is, roughly speaking, the definition of meter uh, line. And uh, uh, the main, uh, so, so our main uh, technical contribution is to show that uh, a similar uh, construction can be done for the case of potential. I just will mention briefly what are the properties that Hirsch and Papadimitro and Vavasis, uh, what are the desired properties. Uh, and uh, so the first one is that the unique local maximum 
of the potential will be located uh, at the end of the line. The second is that for every point, the gradient is strictly positive. The reason for that, if, you, if we go back here, we want the gradient to be strictly positive so that pl players indeed will want to run away uh, uh, to run away from the point X uh, to, to increase their, uh, their gradient. Um, uh, and the last one, which is very, very crucial, uh, is the locality. But essentially, the definition of the, the potential does not depend on the global behavior of the, of the line, but only on the local behavior, namely, and local behavior in this case is uh, uh, what was the previous vertex, what is the next vertex, but not more than that. Yeah, this is the, this is, and the, the locality is, is the, the, the crucial point for, for, for having a reduction from the query uh, complexity to, uh, to, to this problem. Okay, uh, I, I will not uh, go with you on, on, on the con uh, how, how we did the, the contraction. Let me finish uh, with the, uh, with an open problem. So there are uh, several open problems. One of them, for instance, if you saw that our result is 2 to the power square root of n. So it's an in interesting whether it can be improved to 2 to the power n. My conjecture that it can, and, but we didn't succeed to do it yet. Uh, uh, but I think the most interesting uh, open problem that I see, I will finish uh, with it, is can these techniques be applied to a computational setting? Can, can, can we maybe take something from the communication uh, result and apply it in, uh, in a computational setting uh, to, pro to provide some hardness for mixed Nash equilibrium? Uh, uh, for uh, my from past uh, experience in, in different areas, the, the, this uh, idea of taking insights from communication complexity and essentially proving something better in the computational complexity, it, it was successful. So <laughs> I'm positive about <laughs> uh, I'm positive about this. OK, thank you. Yes? So in this, uh, yeah, th this is a very good open question uh, to, to optimize the parameters uh, like uh, uh, what uh, Aviad and Mika Goose did uh, recently when they, they succeeded to prove that in two-player games, essentially the communication complexity of uh, two-player uh, N action games is not only polynomial in N, but in fact it's, uh, the, the correct uh, parameter is, is, is square, which means that essentially you have to communicate the entire game. Uh, our results so far, uh, are not of this uh, type. They just uh, some polyno uh, n to some power, uh, which uh, mm, we didn't try to kind of to 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 optimize uh, that. Um, uh, so, if I remember correctly, our uh, uh, our uh, constant is uh, n to the power uh, one fourth. Or something like this, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, do you think we will be able to do such uh, low bounds for special cases, like say sparse? Games or, because we have hardness for PPL hardness for potential games. Okay. In general, uh, for let's say sparse games. Uh, communication be. hardness results about uh, sparse. So you should be careful and, uh, that, that if, if it will be too sparse, then you can just report where the non-zeros appear, right? Uh, <laughs> and then it will be uh, succinct, but it, it's definitely a good question with, uh, what... Uh, yeah, you have to do the location and the value. Yeah. But yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, you, you need them to, to be, yeah, so, something, yeah. Yeah, yeah, if... Uh, if uh, mm. like low influence like yeah, so, so this is, a, yeah, the, the, this is, a, I think, an interesting uh, open problem in this context is, uh, um, is to look on uh, one specific special class, which I think is very interesting, is that of uh, uh, Lifshitz games. Essentially, a Lifshitz game is a game where uh, a, sing, a unilateral deviation of player i does not affect much the utility of player j. 
uh, no, the, the, uh, additively, that, uh, in the, in the Lifshitz sense, yeah, so uh, uh, they define it. Uh, uh, the nice uh, property of these games uh, is that uh, uh, there is a, space. sorry? So then the strategy space is continuous? No, no, no. Uh, so no. think even of, uh, of a discrete set. What it says that the, the, so think of games with many players, yeah, and uh, the strategy, uh, if player one switches from action one to action two, it affects the utility of player two by at most, let's say, uh, some, some epsilon. And think of epsilon, for instance, as one over square root n, or one over n. Uh, at, uh, if you take epsilon to be too small, then it becomes too trivial game. Yeah, but if you take epsilon, for instance, to be one over square root of n, then it's a very nice result by uh, Shmai, uh, Azrieli and Shmaya that uh, these games are, uh, always have a pure mesh equilibrium. So uh, to the best of my knowledge, I don't know how, uh, what it, I don't know what is the co complexity of finding this pure mesh equilibrium, and I think that communication complexity is very nice tool to analyze it because those games do not, uh, we are talking here about large games that do not have succinct representation, so hardness evidence might come in the form of a com communication complexity uh, model. <laughs> and uh, I want also to thank the organizers. <laughs> <laughs>